Happy NaNoWriMo writers! As many of you know, I've been on a bit of a social media break after publishing my YA fairy fantasy series on Wings of Ash and Dust, but now that it's NaNoWriMo time, I'm excited to get back into things, so I thought it'd be fun to share with you my favorite NaNoWriMo applications, resources, writing reward ideas, and other must-haves I thought would be really helpful for you guys too. I actually did a fun live stream with all of these favorites last year, but that video was about an hour long. So I thought it'd be really fun to edit down that video to the most important 15 minutes so you could get all the goodness without having to watch the full hour, kind of like a highlights reel or a crash course of the video. I'm also including some ideas from those that were in the live chat box that day that had some really great ideas I loved. And all the links to everything mentioned will be in the description, including a playlist with a bunch of other helpful NaNoWriMo videos. You ready? Here we go. What apps do you use to help you write and stay motivated? One of the applications or softwares that I love to use is Scrivener. If you already have Scrivener and you want some more tips, I have a bunch of videos on this channel now with some Scrivener tips for you, but it's definitely been a game changer for me and I really love using it to not only write but plan my novels. Also, if you're word sprinting, I also really like Google Timer. You can just type in Google Timer into Google and it's like comes up with a timer right there and you can set it to whatever you want and it'll repeat for you if you want. Um, but there's also a bunch of other ways that I like to sprint with other people. So you can search writing sprints on YouTube. I have a bunch of friends on Marco Polo, the app, which is really fun. You can send like video messages back and forth instead of text messages. And so sometimes I do like little check-ins and sprints with my friends through Marco Polo. And then our Patreon uh, Discord group is also a really great place where at any time anyone can just pop in our productivity sprint channel and say, hey, is anybody available to sprint and um, can sprint together. I wanted to point out um, Bethany's videos. She has a series of 20 minute writing sprint videos that have like music in the background and pretty pictures and the timer. And so if you can't find a sprint or somebody to sprint with, um, these are really motivating and fun. I'm still loving using Trello for a bunch of different things. I have a few videos on this channel. I use it for Kanban boards and outlining and revision and I actually recently took Jessica Brody's fast drafting class. It was suggested to me by one of my patrons, Cam. It is definitely worth it. It was so fun and in it she talks about some of her revision strategy and she's actually going to be coming out with a course all about her revision strategy. If you didn't know, Jessica Brody wrote the Save the Cat Writes a Novel book, which I love. So I'm actually implementing some of her revision tracking things that she does while she is drafting so that she can already be set up to start revising after she's done her draft, which is super smart. I also use Pinterest boards and I wanted to give you a fun little peek into some of my Pinterest boards. They are great to have to put pictures together of places and characters um, that might uh, inspire you for your book. So this is one I made when On Wings of Ash and Dust was called Called Project Fairy Fantasy before I titled it On Wings of Ash and Dust. I just would constantly put um, new pictures in here. I searched like fantasy art and fantasy locations and all kinds of stuff. And now Pinterest knows me so well and is always suggesting character art and different things to add to my boards. And then Pinterest added the ability to organize pin boards into deeper sections. So here's um, actually a secret board that I have for On Wings of Ash and Dust. Um, I have five different clans, so I made an uh, inspo board for each of the clans, and then I have one for general fairies, I have one for pirates, because there's like a pirate fairy like faction kind of going on, and then um, other locations and aspects here. So when you have like tons and tons of pins, it is really fun to be able to use this little organized feature and then put them into um, boards so you can find things a lot easier. Oh, and then I have one for Sisters of the Shadowwood, and I just wanted to show you like I have specific locations like the manor. I have one for just inspiration. Minor characters were all thrown in here. Um, the boys needed their own one here because there's uh, some love interest going on. Let's see, the forest. And then I have code names for my different characters because I'm not revealing what their names are yet, but I have gold, blue, green, and red because they all um, have their own colors. It can also be like this like downward spiral of just like getting lost in it. But I find Pinterest really, really helpful to visualize things, especially when you're going to like describe something and you're like, I don't even know how to describe this or what this looks like. This is really great. 
Then um, I think the last thing I have on my list is playlists. And I just wanted to shout out Abby Emmons, who also has an author tube channel. It's fabulous. And she has um, her own account on Spotify where she creates these public playlists that have a lot of instrumental music that sort of connect to different genres. I really love Epic Fantasy Battle and Magical New World for fantasy. Those are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards, but there's ones for contemporary stories too and ghost stories stories and teen rom-com. There's so many different ones in here. Ambient Worlds is good too on YouTube. Okay, YouTube playlists are great. I see Pacemaker. I keep hearing that that is amazing and I just haven't gotten into it, but I need to write that down and definitely go check it out. What I know about it is that it, it helps you track like your goals and like your word count and different things like that really, really well. Katrina says, also, I'm using Ulysses to write in now. Okay, I haven't heard too much about that. It's a Mac only app, but it keeps a lot of the distractions out. I wish I could add a screenshot, but it's like a pared down version of Scribd. Dabble. Dabble is another one that I tried too. Um, I just didn't like that it was cloud based and I couldn't like I had to pay every month. Like that was my only down downer, but I loved some of the features. It has a NaNoWriMo integration, automatically updates your word count on the NaNo website. It also has like the way of outlining that JK Rowling does with the grids and stuff. I don't, I can't remember what it's called, but I loved that. Um, Katrina also says, in the forest app for sprints and keeping me off my phone. And what I know about that one, even though I haven't used it is as you're not touching your phone, it's growing like a tree, right? Because when you go to open your phone and like get distracted by something, the tree dies. So that sounds like a really like motivational, fun thing to be like, I don't want to kill my trees. I'm going to put down my phone. Forest app is great. After an amount of time, you can plant an actual tree. <gasps> That's right. I forgot about that. If you do a group sprint, if you're in deep work and someone gets on their phone, it will kill everyone's tree. <gasps> That's terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are your writing space must haves? Obviously I have my desk and um, I also have you guys know what a lap desk is you can get them at like Amazon or Barnes and Noble I have a few links down below to any of the like the items I'm mentioning I've linked down below for you and you can get a bunch of stuff from Amazon but when I sit on the couch or when I sit outside it's a perfect way to still have like desk feel and have my computer not heating up on my lap I don't know if yours ever does that and then makes it really easy to go to a different space to then keep writing elsewhere oh and my backpack you know what Hold on two seconds. What I really love, because I am all about travel to the different places that I wanna write, I keep all of the stuff I'm about to share with you in this backpack here. So if I do end up wanting to go to a library or cafe, I can just put everything in here and go. Or um, I can, during the morning, I can write in my office and then I can pack everything up and then go outside. So I've also linked the backpack that I have down below as well. Um, and what's inside my backpack? I have my laptop and the charger. So make sure you have your charger if you're going elsewhere because uh, you don't want it to die and then lose all your work. I also have my headphones. So these are my headphones. These are my noise canceling headphones. And I can confirm as I put them on that I lost sound. <laughs> couldn't hear myself. Um, I also have brainstorming notebooks. So you can do any kind of notebook, but I like creating notebooks with Shutterfly and making mock covers. So this is not the actual cover of my story. I just made a fake one and put it on this notebook. And I do a lot of brainstorming in these kinds of notebooks. I have one for Ash and Dust as well. So that's through Shutterfly. I have that link down below too. I also have my bullet journal, which I keep my word tracking and my to-dos and my goals and all kinds of stuff. I have a bunch of videos on this channel also about bullet journals. And if you didn't see, I really have enjoyed creating specific spreads just for Preptober and NaNoWriMo. So that's been really fun. I also really like these particular highlighters. They're called mild liner highlighters and they don't bleed through paper and they make it really easy to make like pretty spreads like this. Um, I also have my Save the Cat Writes a Novel book. I have it in my backpack. <laughs> so this is Save the Cat Writes a Novel and it is something I reference all the time when I get stuck with certain beats of my story. I have a whole series on this channel about that book as well. You can have a reward book also with you just 
When you meet a certain word count, you can pull out your reward book and read it. Um, but I also love book bows. So they can keep all of your notebooks and your books very secure and safe in your bags. So I put like different books or different notebooks within here and then put them into my backpack so that the pages don't get crinkled. My snack of choice is grapes. I like them because you can just pick them off. They're already like chewable size. I'm not like ripping something off. And my fingers for the most part don't really get sticky. And then a 32 ounce water bottle. Um, I wanted to show you guys the one that I have because, and I'm gonna remove this just for a second. So this is the water bottle I got and I was just, I realized that I was getting dehydrated, I wasn't drinking enough. And so I found this one on Amazon. Basically 32 ounces times two is really uh, what they say you should be drinking in a whole day. So it has time markers to tell you, okay, drink to this point at 8 a.m. and drink till this point at 9 a.m. and blah, 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 until you get to 11. And then you fill up the water, water bottle again, so refill. Then it has markers for uh, the second half of the day. And then you know that you have drunken enough for the day. Those are a bunch of ideas from me. I'm gonna go back and see what you guys had to say. Never heard of these book bows. I need to check them out. Oh my gosh. They're my favorite book bows. Go check them out. And they come in so many different styles and sizes. I have juggling balls for when I'm stuck on a scene. That's fun to have like something physical to do to get out of the stuck zone. Candle, sprint tracker, water and tea. Oh, and M&Ms, they're my snack reward. Ooh, I like that. That's a good snack reward. Pens, paper, stack of classic novels, my knitting and a chocolate drink. I love it. Kind of related to this, but I'm getting a, a bike desk soon. It's a bike desk. It's a bike that has a desk attached so you can bike and work on your computer. What? I did not know this was a thing. That sounds amazing. I was just telling my husband I need to start working out again. <laughs> <laughs> tea. <laughs> Always need tea. Also, I love to have a notebook for notes and sticky notes. Usually I also have my journals and plan for the day and then week with me to keep on track. Love it. An assortment of pens, my brainstorming notebook, and my laptop. I also keep everything in a backpack for when I move to a different room. Or go Did you say that before I said mine? I think it must be my notebook. I usually have one for each work in progress. Lap desk. Wonderful. Blanket for my feet <laughs> and a tasty beverage of some kind. Laptop and charger, favorite pens, notebook, notepad, corkboard, on the wall with index cards. Yeah, index cards are very helpful. Sometimes a candle or diffusing essential oils. Ah, Bethany, I love your laptop stand. Really want to get one of those eventually, maybe as a nano reward. Yes, that's a great idea for nano reward. Where do you like to write and what's your favorite writing spot? One is my office and I just recently reorganized and like made like my own little nook corner. I think I tend to reorganize my office before nanos and camp nanos almost all the time. It just helps me motivate and like feel like it's fresh and clean. And I also wanted to let you know that um, I have a video in the playlist I was telling you about that actually helps you set up your office space um, so that you're sitting correctly. It's called Desk Setup and Stretches for Writing Pain. I actually did it with my husband who is a physical therapist and he has a bunch of tips about if you have like I would get really bad shoulder pain um, some people have like wrist or finger pain when they write for a long time so I just wanted to put it in there that uh, you can check out that video if you need some exercises or you need to be able to know how to set up your desk so that you're not like slouching and like getting writer's pain the second place I really like to write is in my living room so I try to stay in my office as much as possible but sometimes I just need to like change it up and so so I also really like going to a spot in my living room. Just want to show you some visuals of some fun, cute spaces that you could cultivate for your writing time. Cause it is really good for your brain to sort of be in a similar space so that your brain can recognize, okay, I get to this space and I'm ready to write. Katrina says, I have a desk set up in the playroom that faces the wall. Obviously I have a problem with getting distracted and this is how I fix that. That's fabulous. Uh, Leanne, I prefer to write in cafes at home. Sometimes I write outside early in the morning. That sounds so lovely. Yes, libraries. Okay, I write in my office because it makes me feel more professional. Yes, more motivated, right? I hand write a lot. I'm so impressed by anybody who hand writes. I just can't do that. Uh, so I write in my living room. Sometimes I go to Barnes and Noble and other cafes to write. Uh, Mary says I officially can't write in the living room because one TV is a distraction and two, my cats try to sit on top of my laptop when I'm writing. Yes. I do the miracle morning. And so writing early in the morning in my office, 
I love the Miracle Morning. I I didn't get to finish the whole book, but I, I watched a lot of videos on that concept and um, I think it's genius. So I'm so glad you're doing that. What are your writing rewards and milestones? These can be rewards for word count, daily goals, weekly goals, um, or winning NaNoWriMo at the end. For me, I think I listed a bunch more ideas in this Preptober Writer Plan With Me video. I shared like a lot, a lot of different ideas, but these are the ones that actually help me. Just keeping a tracker at all, like a daily, like this was my word count, or even for this sprint, this was how many words I got, that really motivates me. Um, so it's not really like a reward necessarily, but it's a reward for myself to like know that I'm making progress. I really like setting up also Excel spreadsheets that where I put in my word count, it'll, or the NaNoWriMo website that'll tell you, okay, you just did this amount of words and I have this amount of words left, or your goal like per day is like going down. Um, so I really love trackers like that. Sort of like a negative reward, positive Positive, but like in reverse, I guess, is I can't go on socials, watch a show or read until after my daily goal is met. Staying away from some things until I've reached that goal and then I reward myself with being able to do it. Daily sticker reward. So if you're just a person who really likes stickers, you could then get like some cute stickers for yourself. And when you reach those goal mile markers, maybe that's enough for you to just have like a calendar. And like every day when you reach your goal, you get to put like a new sticker on there. And actually my friend, Mandelin, creates stickers. These two videos right here talks about her stickers and she has specific ones for NaNoWriMo that help you uh, track your goal count. You can actually write your goal count um, every day on the sticker. Daily or weekly money jar um, is something that I think I'm gonna do. I'm, I haven't picked what like my end of NaNoWriMo like thing I wanna reward myself with and like purchase when I'm done. But then I love this idea of like every time you reach like maybe your daily goal, you put a little bit of money in a jar for that goal to then get it at the end. I also didn't put it on here, but like date night would probably be a really um, great motivator for me as well. Having like a specific kind of food that both Ben and I really like and just enjoying like an evening together and celebrating maybe at the end of the week. Like I made, met my goal and now let's just like have some like good quality time together. Danny says my favorite candles, etc., for dailies, bigger items for bigger milestones. And if I win, I get to buy something from the Nana website or more expensive item. Yes. Oh, and somebody, I think it was my friend Renee, she had this idea of like you could buy yourself something that reminds you of your story. So like an, an item or like getting a custom item made or something that like gives you the vibes of like your story, like a notebook that has like a scene on it that like reminds you of your story or something like that. Getting something that relates to the story is such a fun reward idea, like a souvenir. Yes. And then you can always look at it and remember, I have rewards for each 10K mark. Most are free. So bubble bath at 40K because I'm almost there and wouldn't that feel wonderful? Yes, it would. I also have some daily rewards. Love it, Mary. I have to have my milestones by scenes. Fabulous. That just really makes me feel like I'm moving forward in my story. For rewards, it's often pet related. Love to get stuff for my hamster. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that you also have it by scenes because it's like, oh, I reached the end of a scene. Now I'm going to reward myself. I really really like that. Last year, my reward was buying Scrivener. Yes. And if you win NaNoWriMo officially through the website, I think they give you a discount on Scrivener. Do they still do that? I think, I think they do. I never reward myself. I need to go get a pedicure. Yeah. At 25,000 words or something like that. Pedicure. Yes. I want to add that to my list as well. Anything from Starbucks, venti nine pup iced chai with pumpkin spice cold foam. Nice. Time with friends every day. And sushi. I miss sushi. I haven't had sushi in so long. That got me really excited. A chocolate croissant. Oh, my favorite snack. Have you, do you like Nutella, Leanne? We recently had a, a hot toasted croissant with Nutella in the middle and it was like the best thing. I hope this video gave you guys a bunch of ideas and resources to rock NaNoWriMo this year and I would love to know what kind of project you're working on for NaNoWriMo in the comments down below. For me, I'm actually a Nano Rebel because I'll be working on multiple projects. First are the outlines for not only season two or the sequel of On Wings of Ash and Dust, but I also want to get back to my other fantasy serial, Sisters of the Shadowwood, and I have a fantasy standalone project I'd love 
have to get back to too, Project Snow. Then after I do a little bit of plotting for each, I think I'll be able to tell which project is calling to me and hopefully by mid nano, I'll be able to say, okay, this is the one I'm going to get back into drafting for. And of course I'm finalizing the paperback version of On Wings of Ash and Dust. That will include all six episodes. I can't wait to show you guys the cover. And if you want to see a sneak peek, make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter or part of my Patreon because those wonderful people always get to see things first. Good luck everyone with NaNoWriMo. And if you're looking for even more NaNoWriMo resources, check out one of these two videos and I'll have a new one for you next week. So we'll see you there.